this video is sponsored by audio.com. Hey, what's up? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create the upside down from Stranger Things. Super trending right now, so let's see how we do it in Adobe After Effects. Alright, so here is the footage that I will provide you with the link in the description below. So if you want to follow along with the exact same footage, you can do so right there. So this is the shot that we have. We recorded this using the Slypod and Gimbal. And yeah, that's uh, making this incredible shot where we have this crane shot and looking down on the street. So really cool. We already have a really nice sky. Uh, if you want, you can do a sky replacement. I have a tutorial for that, but in this case, we won't need that because the sky looks interesting. The first thing that I want to do is set my resolution here to full and just go all the way to the beginning and use my pen tool to just key myself out because we want to remove anything in the shot that actually moves and in this case that's me and it's pretty close to the camera so we need to remove myself uh, from the frame. So we're going to select it and just like that and then press M on the keyboard, set the mask to none and create a stopwatch keyframe here. Click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe, go all the way till the end, uh, move it maybe over here and then go back and just try to adjust it every second or so. So we're one second forward and just make that mask fit. And then we're going to set this mask to subtract and we get something like this. So we just want to check uh, that nothing actually leaks through it. And then we want to click on the footage, go to layer, pre-compose this, move all the attributes and just uh, name this track comp. And then we want to go over to the track camera and click on that open up the advanced tab and click detailed analysis it's super hot in here it's crazy it's 40 degrees in belgium i don't know what's happening i have an airco but i cannot turn it on during recording so if i'm sweating it's it's insane out here it's like we're living in the desert so um bear with me by the way what do you think of my my new style to beard or not to beard <laughs> Anyway, while we are waiting for this track to analyze, let's talk about today's video sponsor, audio.com. Audio.com is a platform where you can download tracks and sound effects for your video needs. They have some really amazing tracks, and for this video, we used these tracks, which are almost identical to the tracks in Stranger Things, or at least they have the vibe down exactly, so that's pretty great. discover 30,000 plus sound effects. They add new music daily and they already have a really interesting plan. So definitely go and check them out. The link in the description or go to audio with two eyes.com slash Ines. All right, so let's go back to the video. So now we have something like this. We can see our track. And if you're not satisfied with the track, which I'm not, frankly, you will need to add in some more details. So I'm just going to quickly delete that, jump into this composition and just add a simple tint effect, add a curves and add an unsharp mask. I'm going to set the unsharp mask to 150 and set the radius to two. I'm going to add a little bit more contrast in here. And normally this should give me more detail to work with uh, to get a solid track. So let's go back here, go to the track comp and click on track camera and then also check the detailed analysis. While we wait, I'm already going to start creating these veins that we want to put on the walls and everything. So we want to create that kind of monstrous kind of look uh, of the upside down. And to do that, I'm going to create a new uh, composition and I'm going to make this 2000 by 2000. And I'm going to call this roots and click OK. Then in here, I'm going to create a new solid layer and make it comp size. And I'm going to call this root. OK. And here I'm going to add the advanced lightning effect. By the way, if you don't know what this is, this is console effects. It brings up any effect uh, that you want uh, with control space. You can also find the effects right here in effects and presets or at the effects right here. Now we have lightning applied to our solid. This has nothing to do uh, with roots, but if you modify it a little bit, it can look quite uh, something like roots because um, yeah, everything kind of looks similar in reality. So I'm going to change this to let's go for anywhere. And now you can see that it starts to look like um, more of a root or something that you can put somewhere. Search a little bit until you find like an angle that you like. You can also play here with the origin just like that. And let's say that you're satisfied with this. You could go into the core settings, increase the radius quite a bit. And now you're starting to get some kind of roots. 
And you can also add the fractal noise effect now. So you can uh, click here, add fractal noise, and you can set this to a blending mode of screen or multiply and play with the contrast. There we go. You can also play with the transform settings, change it to a dynamic progressive and so on and so on. Play with the brightness if you want to. And like this, you can create some really, really nice variation in your roots just so they don't look perfect, let's say. You can also color them by adding a tint effect here and then just um, giving it a darker color. So this is a little bit how you would create the roots. You can also go in here and play with the forking. Uh, if you increase this, you will get more forking going on and also with the DK, which is going to extend the forking. So if you want less forking, but a lot of DK, you can also do that. And now you're getting some different type of structures uh, and different looks. So you can do some really cool stuff using the lightning effect, uh, not to use it for lightning. So that's uh, something that you could think about. And what I will do is just start my track around right here because I only want to start placing uh, these veins on the right side of my uh, shot. And I do see that the beginning uh, part uh, does some difficulties in the track. So I'm just going to trim it by pressing B on the keyboard and trim my footage here. So it's just a little bit shorter. Um, or you can also just split this layer by going to edit and split the layer and just focus on this one and click analyze for the 3D camera tracker to start over. All right, so that did uh, a better job by just cutting it, trimming it from here. Um, yeah, just always be cautious uh, how you would do your track. But now we have a lot of points. We have a great track going on. And so now we can place our roots in here. So we can jump into this composition, click here, press M on the keyboard and set the mask back to none so we can see myself and then just deselect all these effects or delete them so we can see our original footage again, but the tracking data stays. So what you can do here is select a few points, uh, right click, create solid and camera, select a few here, right click, uh, well, make Make sure that you have like the same perspective going on. So try to select a few different points to see what's working right here. Create solid. That was actually good. Create solid. So basically you're laying out a 3D foundation for your map here. Okay. So now if we solo this or we disable our footage, we just have some solids. Um, yeah flying around, uh, which doesn't look like much, but this is just uh, great um, feedback for our roots, where we want to place our roots. So we can enable our footage, go back to your project and go to the root. You can duplicate that root by going to edit and duplicate it and jump back into it, click on the root, and then just literally play a little bit with the origin. Boom, you have a different root. So I'm going to create three different ones just to showcase uh, what we can do, but it's up to you to create yeah, as much variation as, as you please. So now we're going to add our root to our footage and select the first uh, solid. And we're going to turn this root layer into a 3D layer, just like the solid and press P and also hold shift and press R to get the position information and the orientation uh, information. So hold shift, select both of these and go for edit, copy, and then just paste it onto the root and that will place the root in that position. Now you can disable the solid and we can concentrate on that root. We can make it bigger if you want. And like this, you're going to get roots on the ground that you can position uh, in that 3D location and it will stick perfectly to that place. If you want, you can also detail them a little bit more by adding a layer style. So we can go for layer styles, drop shadow, and also layer style. Uh, let's go for uh, maybe a bevel and emboss. And so if we're going to play with these, we're going to get a better depth uh, perspective here in After Effects. Obviously, you can also do this in 3D software if you'd like to, to really make this um, yeah more realistic, especially when it comes closer to the camera. We have a lot of perspective and 3D gets real tricky. But when it's far in the distance, you can get away with this trick fairly easy. and then play with the angle a little bit until uh, you get something. So try to look at the light where it's coming from in your actual shot. So it's coming from the left side. And then we also want to play maybe with the height a little bit and also with the intensity, of course. So something like this and yeah, just keep doing that. And you can see we have a nice track here. If you want, you can also rotoscope yourself to make sure that it gets in front of this part. But I'm not going to cover that part because yeah, if I've covered 
<laughs> uh, rotoscoping quite a bit in my tutorials. Same goes for the day to night effect. I'm not going to cover it too roughly or too detailedly because I've already covered it quite a few times already how to do a day to night effect. So I'm just going to do it really quick here. I'm going to add an exposure, a curves and also, well, a curves and a tint. I'm going to delete the CC burn film. Uh, so for my tint, I'm going for a blue tint right here, maybe more towards the purple color and maybe a little bit darker. Set it to something like 85 and then add a lot more contrast. And like this, uh, you're going to start playing until you get something that you like. Then the next thing that we want to do is add in some particles to make it look like we're in the upside down. So I'm going to create a new solid. I'm going to add the CC particles. So I'm going to rename this to CC particles and add the CC particle world effect. CC particle world is free and you can see that now it's already in 3D. So if you have a 3D cam um, tracked camera, you're going to see that your particles are going to spawn instantly in your shot. So what you want to do is change the settings a little bit by going into the producer um, and going into the physics. For the physics, I'm going to set it to explosive. Um, explosive. Uh, for the animation, I'm going to keep it at explosive, but I'm going to set it to velocity zero. I'm also going to set the radius here to two, two by two. So we have a big radius. I'm not sure if that's going to be uh, enough. I do think so. Um, we, it, it looks good here. Uh, and we are also going into the grid here and just turn that off so we don't get distracted by all these other things that we see here in our shot. We can actually hide anything. So we just see the particles. And then for the particle itself, we wanna change it from line to a faded sphere. So we see, yeah, little particles here and change the color to a bluish color, just like in the series. You can also play with the opacity by changing it to something like 50% and also play with the size here um, by yeah, just lowering this a little bit to get more subtle uh, particles going on. You can also use the birth rate here, double it by uh, adding, well, this just adds more particles or spawns more particles. And if we're going to play this, we're going to see these particles floating around now. We're also going to turn off the gravity. So if we go here to the gravity vector, we can set it to zero. Also the gravity in the physics here should be set to zero. And after playing around a little bit, you get something like this. Play around with all the settings for the particles, have a little bit of fun and see what you can come up with. So I'm going to also enable the motion blur for this layer so we get a smooth blur when the camera rotates. It just makes the thing look more realistic. And so all that you can do now is also add some lightning here in the sky. And what I've also done is created a new adjustment layer to make the sky pop just a little bit more. So I'm going to add a curves to this um, uh, adjustment layer. I'm also going to bring down the curves. I'm just going to concentrate on the sky. I just want to make it pop and really uh, make it look great. Something like this. I'm also going to uh, lower the tint effect a little bit because I thought it was a little bit too saturated. And then I'm also going to use the ellipse tool to just mask out the area of the sky something like this press F on the keyboard set it to something like 500 nobody's gonna know you have a mask so now we can press M on the keyboard click on a stopwatch for this mask and go all the way back and maybe in this case you want to move it just a little bit I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger here and maybe a little bit higher and then right here it comes back down because we want to see the intense sky and there we go so that looks great and another thing that you can do is create another adjustment layer and in this case we're going to head over to this position here and we can add a exposure tag to this and also a tint effect and so for the tint i'm going to set it to a red color but for the exposure i'm going to increase it quite a bit you can also play with the gamma to get um, yeah, different looks in the sky and then again use the ellipse tool to create some details like right here and then press F on the keyboard to really fade it and like this you're going to get some fake lightning and so you can uh, play with the with the exposure to make it look great. So you can click on a stopwatch move one two three frames backwards with the page up key on your keyboard if you press U on the keyboard you're going to see your keyframe that you've created set it to something like three uh, go one frame forward or one frame backward, set it to zero and like move it a little bit and just play around. So after a while, if you just um, animate the exposure, you're going to get stuff like this. 
So that's looking really cool. And now you can just trim this adjustment layer uh, to wherever it needs to be. Duplicate it, and so click then on it, duplicate it, move it over. And then you can also move the mask, for example, to get lightning in a different spot. So you have the first one that starts, the other one that finishes it. That looks so cool. And so another thing that you can do is now create uh, the same adjustment layer, for example, uh, but just duplicate it and then press M on the keyboard and remove that mask. So everything is red now, but just press T on the keyboard and set it to something lower, something like 25 or something. Uh, so now it's going to animate it exactly the same, but it's going to show a little bit more intensity. Uh, well, it's going to show a little bit more intensity. So now we have the combination here of the actual lightning and some color correction. All I'm going to do now is add a few more roots, uh, remove all of these solids and just place a root on these and then I will have my final result for the Stranger Things upside down in Adobe After Effects. And all of this brings us to the final result of this video and here is my upside down. Alright, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to check out audio.com with my link in the description below. Apart from that, I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, I'm going to leave you with another video of mine right here so you can continue your amazing VFX journey. And I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, create epic videos.